Um, so thank you everyone for coming this week. My name George will tell us about big fiber theorems, ideal value measured, and uh, some about technology. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. It's a joint work with uh, Adidik Stein, Yenik Gonor, and Paul Zapolsky. And uh, basically, the the idea of the lecture is as follows. Yeah, you know, various fields of mathematics, uh, there exists uh, so-called big fiber theorems. Uh, so if you have a map uh, F from X to Y in suitable category, so there exists a point Y0 in Y, such that the fiber image F inverse of Y0 is big. And I will give three illustrations. So one is topological center point theorem. So another is maximal fiber theorem for maps of the torus so, so due to Gromov and non-displaceable uh, non fiber theorem in symplectic topology, which we proved with of long ago. And we will try to use formalism of Gromov's cohomological ideal valued measures and, the, and uh, their symplectic counterpart, which, which is based on actually symplectic cohomology theory by Okay, so so somehow somehow the, the, I will try to give a kind of coherent uh, exposition of these three results. Mm -hmm. So let me start with big fiber theorem. So let y be a kind of let's say d-dimensional manifold and p a positive integer. Uh, consider simplex of dimension p times d plus one. So then the claim is that for any continuous map from the simplex to y, there exists a big fiber, big in which sense. So there exists a point in y which intersects all p times d dimensional faces of the simplex. Okay. So here is, and for a, for a fine maps, it's very classical result by Radot. Okay, of 1946, which has many formulations, but this is one of them. And uh, here is an example when uh, our simplex is a triangle, right? So n equals to two, and d equals to p equals to one. And uh, so indeed, I mean, if you consider a map from from uh, simplex to line, there exists a point whose pretty much kind of intersects all three, uh, all three are uh, one dimensional sides of the triangle. <clears throat> okay. uh, uh, next result. So next result is uh, due to Chromov. So again, why let's say d-dimensional manifold p positive integer. Assume that n is at least p times d plus one, then for every continuous map from torus to y, torus of dimension n. There exists a point which is whose preimage f inverse of y zero is large is large in the following way. So if you look at rank of the restriction map in cohomology, so this rank is greater or equal than two in the power. So again, here is a little illustration. So p equals to d equals to one. So n equals to two. We have two dimensional torus. We project it, let's say, to a circle, and we see that preimage a circle, and the cohomological calculation shows that rank is exactly. So, uh, big fiber theorem three. So, I will remind a small scale of symplectic manifolds, which was introduced actually. By Hofer, so if uh, we have a closed symplectic manifold and gam from omega is group of Newtonian diffeomorphism, so we'll say uh, that X is displaceable if there exists a Hamiltonian diffeomorphism which displaces. And this is a very nice definition because it highlights difference between Lebesgue measures. So one can argue that uh, kind of uh, two dimensional symplectic Topology is about Lebesgue measure. So this is wrong because kind of this disk of positive measure is small, it kind of displaced to itself. But the equator, which has zero Lebesgue measure, large set because it comes, right? 
So then the non-displaceable fiber theorem says the following. So it's that we have a map which is it's called involutive, right? So it's let's say map to R n and it's uh, coordinate functions f i f j commute. So then all theorem by Antip and myself says that there exists necessarily a point whose preimage is displaceable. Okay. And uh, here is a G, I mean it's Humpty Dumpty and uh, Waiter is either belt or tie. Yeah. So in, the, in this uh, other way, so so waiter is non-displaceable. So it's possible. Um, non non-displaceable. And uh, equivalent formulation is uh, the Polsky, so-called rigidity of partition of unity, and it says that the finite cover of closed symplectic manifold by open symplectic sets does not admit a Poisson commuting partition of unity. So that's the equivalent formulation. So by the way, uh, this will be kind of uh, kind of important for the, what we will say next. Uh, these results have applications to detecting non-displaceability. In a sense, classical problem goes back to Arnold's conjecture, right? So uh, have a when the set cannot be cannot be displaced. Right? So uh, this result provides a new method. So assume that we have uh, this involutive map, so map with Poisson computer components. And we know by some reason, so we just some soft calculation for this, that all the fibers but one are displaceable. So then the previous result says that the remaining fiber is non displaced and uh, uh, here is a, a, an example. So we have a map from CPN to RN, which is a, just a moment map. So standard moment map, it's uh, coordinate functions of Hamiltonians of the standard action. So then uh, the center is non-displaceable, right? Because each other point is just displaceable by permutation of coordinates, which is the unitary map, right? And that's the way how one can prove so I wish to emphasize that uh, this, the image is simplex and k-dimensional faces are CPK is CPK. So, yeah, so just to, to remember. So Berisander is famous Lagrangian torus, it's Clifford torus, and uh, in this way with Beran and we proved that Clifford torus is non-displaceable, but probably before then, uh, she realized that if you twist especially Lagrangian floor cohomology with some line bundles, then floor cohomology of Clifford torus also not zero. Okay. Because usual floor homology somehow they vanished here, but it's not so clear. In this way, another way. Uh, these are three theorems, and uh, I will try to attack them by the same tool. It's, uh, very ingenious tool, which goes back to Gromov, okay? So, uh, so I would say it's late Gromov, so it's Gromov like of 2010. Right. So, so he, he wrote a couple of huge papers which contain a lot of materials, and one of them is this ideal value measures. So here is the story, so assume that we have graded skill commutative associated. Numerical algebra so graded, I mean, could be periodically graded. So let's assume for simplicity it's finite dimensional, so some condition. But if you have a closed manifold, actually think about, uh, I mean, uh, without any mystifications, think about cohomology of, uh, just as an algebra. Okay. And so here is the definition. So what is the ideal value measure? Is an assignment. Well, let's start with open sets. So to each open set corresponds a graded ideal, mu of u and a. And here are the properties. So we have normalization. So mu of empty set is zero. Mu of everything is uh, everything. It's monotone by inclusion. It's continuous in a kind of obvious way. So if open set is exhaustion, can be exhausted. Open set with u and u. Of your eyes. So then there are two kind of dual properties, so additivity and intersection. So additivity says that if you have uh, two disjoint sets, so then mu of u union u prime equals just to sum of these ideals for disjoint u and u prime. 
And intersection, if u and u prime cover x, so then mu of intersection and intersection of mu. Finally, there is super important kind of property, which is called multiplicativity, in the sense all the stories about this multiplicativity. So mu of u times mu of u prime sits in mu of u intersect u prime. Okay. And uh, this mu will be extended from open sets to compacts, just with a compact consider <coughs> union of all, or intersection of all open sets containing compact. Get the same of So uh, example, and this is a major example, is cohomology ABM by Gromov. So if you have a set U, you just consider kernel of restriction of H star of X to H star of X minus U. So here is double negation, so it's a little bit tricky. So first we take complement to U, we restrict and we take kernel. Okay? But the idea is the following, that A belongs to mu homological of U if A is represented by a chain supported in U. Okay, so whatever I need to say. So example, if X is CPN, H star of X is uh, just polynomials modular relation H and the power N plus one equals to zero over H is hyperplane class. And observe that CPN minus CPK contracts to CPN k minus one. And from this, we conclude that mu homological of CPK is kernel of map from H star CPN to H star CPN minus k minus one, which is exactly H in the power N minus k times cohomology CPN, okay? So this is, this is a kind of major formula, which uh, will, will be discussed differently. Uh, angles. So let's uh, revisit center point. So here is the result. Let y be again matrix with D or D dimensional manifold. Mu is IVM on y, ideal valid measure. So this is a theorem which is essentially to Roman Karasyok. Roman Karasyok is a Russian mathematician from this famous paper by Karasyok. Peterborn place more. Okay. So what, uh, let uh, I be graded ideal such that I in the power D plus one is not zero. So then there exists a point which is large. In which sense it is large? It means that the complement has small idea. In which sense small I does not belong to this complement. Okay, so uh, I must admit that if you if you read definition of covering dimension, so dimension is covering dimension, you, I think you can prove this theory, okay? But this is kind of very, very funny observation. And uh, that, that somehow, I mean, this product is important, yeah? And the corollary is abstract center point theory, which says the following, that if Z is subset in X, so that mu of z contains i, so the point y zero of z, uh, the point y zero must be in z, because otherwise z belongs to y minus uh, y zero, and uh, mu of i lies in mu of y minus y zero. But we said that y zero is quite a big point. So, uh, I mean, its complement kind doesn't contain i. Uh, from this, uh, Karasyov, uh, in a rather fantastic way, deduced this uh, center point theorem in combinatorial geometry. So he used moment map. Okay. So he argued like this. So, I mean, he, he used different language, but what we're doing is basically translation, translation of this trick in this language. So consider moment map from CPM to delta L. Okay. And, uh, uh, let F be a map from simplex to YD, right? So what we want to prove that if we have a map from simplex to YD, so then there exists a point so that it's pretty much intersects kind of all traces of given dimension. So we just consider push forward of homological IVM on CPN uh, to this Y, okay? And uh, then... Uh, we note, note the following, that uh, cut k-dimensional kind of faces of simplex corresponds to images of CPK under moment. 
Redditoldus. So now corollary, I mean, this corollary yields the center point. So there exists a, there exists a, a point, right? So that it contains all sets whose uh, mu contains this idea corresponding to CP uh, of P times D. Okay. So somehow we use, we analyze combinatorics of the simplex by using cohomology ring of CPN. So that's the idea, right? And because in cohomology ring of CPN, there are ideals whose high power is not zero, so there exists a point so that this pre-image somehow intersects all this, all this uh, phase. Uh, okay, very good. So then uh, next move, Multiplicative rank. So it's a uh, it's very strange definition of Romov, but uh, surprisingly efficient. So again, we have this algebra. And let's denote by A slash R intersections of all ideals, I mean, all graded ideals of co-dimensional less than R. So Gromov's D rank is maximal R so that A slash R and the power D is not zero. And there is very cheap observation that uh, a slash one equals to A. So somehow this rank is always positive. Okay. So for instance, an easy calculation shows that if A is homology ring of CPN, uh, so then A and N equals to P times D plus one, so then A slash P plus one equals to HP to the power A. So rank D plus one of A is P plus one. So you can kind of in simple examples, you can Calculate, calculate this thing. And Gromov proves the following theorem, uh, kind of in, in the same spirit as Karasov's theorem, that if y is a compact metric space of covering dimension d, d algebra and mu IB, IBM, so then there exists a point y0, so, which is large in which sense so we take mu of the complement. We want to say that mu of the complement is small. How small? Its co-dimension is greater or equal than rank d plus one of it. Okay, so that's kind of a, if you wish quantity version. Karasov theorem and it yields with some non-trivial combinatorics, which is worked out in Grom's paper, particularly with Grom's stories. Okay. And so now uh, I just want to say that uh, there is a very useful operation, which we will use a bit later also, so push forward of IBMs, right? So if you have map, you can take push forward, so you analyze the target with this IBM, do conclusions, and so then return back and say something about you. Okay, so, so having big points, I mean fat points in the image in the target corresponds to big fibers in the preimage, okay, so, and the operation is this, push forward. So, that's the, that's the uh, development so far. Okay, so let me, let me now move this uh, towards symplectic uh, situation. So, uh, we will use the following definition. So, if M omega is closed symplectic manifold, we say two compact sets commute, uh, if uh, there exists Poisson commuting functions f and f prime, so that k and k prime are preimages of zero, zero sets, nodal sets of these functions, and uh, functions commute, right? And open sets commute in there if their complement commutes. Okay, and actually, uh, well, uh, on the personal note, I should say that uh, we we with Misha and I worked a lot with kind of understanding of commuting functions, manifolds, and the whole theory of, let's say, quasi states was built. So, so uh, we did not know before this Pralgonish theory, we did not know how to, how to handle commuting subsets. Okay? And so now we will we'll make some steps in this direction. So, uh, just some. Uh, Obvious remark that if we have an involutive map, so map from symplectic manifold to, let's say, smooth manifold is involutive, if 
pre-image, uh, Poisson bracket of pre-image functions commute. Okay, so let's take this definition. And the uh, example is just a map, let's say, to RN with commuting board. Okay, and so then if we have an involutive map, so then pre-images of closed and open subsets commute, kind of, and uh, I mean, this is the main example. So, so, so basically, when I say about commuting subsets, so think about it. Think about this in work. Oh, for instance, here is a nice example. So L is a close connected isotropic submanifold and K is compact. So they commute if either L is different from K or L is contained. Okay, so you can you I mean this commutation imposes certain certain conditions. So now comes the uh kind of main object which we introduced with uh, the Zapolsky, it's called the ideal valued quasi-measure. And the ideal quasi valued quasi-measure on of omega is a Simon, uh, which sends uh, open U to a graded ideal, some algebra, which satisfies all the properties of IVM except one. So remember multiplicativity emphasize that this is the most important property, so to say, for proving of the, of the results. So now we somehow require that multiplicativity property falls whenever u and u prime commute. Okay? And what happens for non-commuting subsets? I don't know. This we don't know. So now this, uh, in constructions, this ideal value quasi-measures come with two extra properties, which we will more or less axiomatize. So one is invariance. So I mean, this uh, was measure is invariant under stream zero and identity component of morphisms and super important vanishing property, which says that we have a displaceable compact subset. So then the complement has full quasi measure, quasi -measure is A and uh, K itself has zero quasi measure. Okay. And here is the, the main theorem that if you have a closed symplectic manifold, so then there exists A and actually A in, in all reasonable examples, QH of N. Okay. Or, or it's relatives kind of, yeah. So, uh, and A, uh, I give you M on M with invariance and vanishing property. So, 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 so gadget, which I described with this quasi multiplicativity to extra axioms. Exists. Okay. And uh, okay, so let me give you an example. So, in dimension two, actually, things are a little bit kind of better because you can, you can do certain things by hands. And if you have a sphere of area one and K is a compact set, you can, uh, uh, sorry, compact uh, two dimensional sub manifold with boundary, you can put tau of K to be zero if K is contained in a closed disk of area less than half. And tau of k equals to mm, and tau of k equals to a otherwise. And uh, 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 one can show with some work then tau extends to i ibq, which satisfies invariance and vanish property. And this example kind of uh, tells you more or less the following that you see, uh, for instance, tau of this cap, because it says it's less than half is zero. And tau of the strip is full because it contains kind of play. But now we consider kind of x and y. Look, so this is full, this is full, intersection is two um, squares, so quasi measure which is small, kind of quasi measure is zero. But this is not a contradiction because this sets kind of so tau of x intersect y is zero is not equal to tau of x times quantum lettering, tau y, right? But these things do not commute. So this commutation kind of is, a, I mean, is a very crucial problem. Okay. So uh, now some applications. So, 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 so what one can do? So one can analyze this kind of existence of big fibers, which follow from kind of uh, uh, Gromf's AVMs, right, and apply them to symplectic situations. So, so first of all, 
uh, you can uh, prove existence of non-displaceable fiber with this language. So among the symplectic tau I big VM from among the involutive, the, just consider pull push forward, which is a VM, apply Gromov's theorem that exists by zero. So that this dimension is greater or equal than one. And then by vanishing of inverse of y zero is not displaced. <coughs> so, so kind of this fat point in this language responds to a non-displaceable file. Or you can prove symplectic center point theorem. So if a omega is a closed symplectic manifold and you have graded ideal say, whose deepest first power is not zero, if y is metric space of covering dimension d, so then every continuous bullet map from n to y has a fiber which intersects all complex sets whose tau contains the ideal. Okay, so somehow we can, we can prove intersection results with, for family in this way. And let me, let me maybe yeah, uh, illustrate this, this result in a down to earth example. So consider torus, and, and this example is really kind of built to make a point. I completely don't understand geometry behind it for already several years. So what we do, we do the following. So we consider torus T6, and we consider uh, sub isotropic sub tori of dimension four, which uh, look like this. So we take points A, B, C, and T, and uh, we group coordinates like this in pairs, Q1, Q2, P1, P3, P2, Q3. Okay. So then we consider restrictions Q1, Q2 equals to A, P1 to P3 equals to B, P2, Q3 equals to C. So it's four poisotropic torque. And we set T A B C equals to T1 of A union T2 of B union T of C. So then the claim is the following that if we will take equator in the sphere, so then every involutive map from T6 times S2 to the surface has fiber which intersects every set of the form T A B C times E. Okay. And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, I mean, uh, symplectic result because, I mean, the equator can, can be shrinked to the point, right? So, and uh, the, 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 then you will not have a result like this. And uh, here is the proof. And actually, one can, one can prove that uh, assumptions here are sharp. So you, you can try to change a little bit this example, it will become non-example. Okay. So So what do you mean in symplectic? I mean this is just any evolutive map. Where is the where is the symplectic condition in the map? No, it's in, in, in symplectic statement. So so, so the, the fact that map is involutive means that pre image of any two functions uh for some community. Ah, okay. Yeah. So symplectic structure is kind of okay. crucial. Don't have smooth analogs. And the point is the following that uh, uh, I mean quantum cohomology of co e equator has full quantum cohomology. Okay. And uh, ideals generated by uh, dq1, dq2, uh, dp1, dp3, and dp2, dq3. So if you consider product of these classes, kind of, you will get a, you will, you will get non-zero. Okay. So, so, so this class times this class times this class is not zero. So I can produce ideal whose third power is not zero, and then this this machinery produces produces this result. So uh, uh, here how this thing looks like, right? So you have six torus, this torus you have union to four tau times the equator, right? And uh, and uh, Somehow, somehow there exists a fiber which intersects all such things. Not even one, which is Can I ask a question? Yes. So in your main theorem, so you said, like, essentially you take the quantum homology as your graded algebra, right? Mm -hmm. So then the, 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 the ideal value quasi measure is like explicitly built for that, that, that you know, it exists? Or? Yes. So, so, so general construction is, is for that. I will explain now. We'll of course explain how, 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 how this is done. 
So, so, so far, a kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously owe you uh, all your explanations so of how it is done. And the construction is a typical construction of symplectic which is so we essentially take a set K and replace it by a lower homology of Hamiltonian, which looks like this. So then we do some algebraic mambo chamber, right? And get an answer. And this goes back to Fleur Hofer symplectic homology. And uh, I mean, many people contribute to the short sketch in the book. Right. Uh, I probably cannot uh, uh, list all the names, but crucially, Varagonish. Yeah? And they will tell in a second what, what Varagonish noticed. So he noticed the following feature, which, uh, yes. Somehow, I mean, when we were working with the with end of convolution functions, yeah, we kind of missed. And this is Poisson, this is my auditory sequence for computing subset. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay, so now you can you can ask uh, where is the enemy, right? So, so it was obvious, kind of, yeah, that uh, for my auditory sequence cannot be true for in general because you have kind of loop spaces, right? And if you have union of two subsets, so there are loops which perfectly go kind of between these two sets. Subsets so absolutely don't know what to do. But the idea is that if uh, you can approach kind of uh, approximate integrated functions, the set by commuting Hamiltonians, so then orbits will not jump, right? Because of commutativity. So they will remain kind of each in its own part. So I think this is this is dynamical, dynamical explanation. So it's notoriously difficult theory, but I believe explanation is here. Okay, and and then um, kind of we simply do the following. So we take a, sorry, we take a would be S H of all the manifold, which is just quantum homology, and a I V Q M we imitate Gromov's construction. So it's kernel S H M to S H M minus. Okay, very good. So, how I'm doing here? Okay, so now let, uh, I mean, there is a little point which should be deemed different. So, my auditories is perfect, but uh, we, don't, we don't have uh, my auditories in our kind of uh, thing. So, we have multiplicativity for commuting side. We have to relate in some way this to these two properties. And this is done uh, based on the following observation that in the algebraic topology, there is this notion of excessive pair. So subsets A and B, so that C star A plus C star B to C star B and B yields isomorphism in homology. Okay? And of course, I mean, my auditories uh, follows from this because with this, we have kind of short exact sequence, right? And uh, which is obvious. And then, because if this is isomorphism, you can simply kind of, roughly speaking, you, uh, you, you can replace one by another, and so then you get a uh, kind of summary, my So another thing where this excessive pair is used, excessive pair is used, is used in the construction of relative coproduct product, H of X, A, uh, tensor h of xb to hx of h and b. Uh, probably this I cannot explain by just, uh, you know, hand waving way. This is absolutely standard material. Algebraic topology and excision is impo important. So, morally speaking, this paralgonish commutativity is analog of excision. Yeah? So it, uses, it, it kind of yields my auditories and this relative cup product in both. Okay. So, what we'll do, we'll define algebraically, actually, this relative coproduct is H of MA, right? And via pair of puns, product in the spirit of Tinganok and Baralgonish, SHMA tensor SHMB to SHM union B. So relation with our IVQM is the following. So if you consider exact sequence of a pair, SHMAC to SHM, Right, so then uh, I mean kernel of 
this restriction, which is just here, is image of this P. Okay. And so uh, then, uh, yes, it should be kind of, it should be, yeah, so you mentioned that I'm cheating all the time because you actually have to work on chain level and there are choices. There is a lot of homotic algebra. Okay, so it was original. In this way, it's impossible to understand it. Okay, so, so uh, I rather go a little bit cheap, but then, and of argument uh, proof of quasi multiplicativity looks like this. So I will take commuting sets A and B. So uh, we can we can look at the following diagram, right? So we have SHM A complement, tensor SHM B complement to SHM A intersect. Okay, and A intersect B complement is exactly A complement union B complement, something which I learned in sixth grade. So, so, so it turns out to be quite crucial in this story, and this uh, this uh, enjoys this map P uh, to uh, SH of M and multiplication. And so then you argue like this. So uh, we know that. Uh, a prime, uh, so remember that P of A prime was A and PB of B prime was B. So uh, so A prime times B prime sits here, okay? And so A tensor B equals to P A of A prime uh, tensor P, P, uh, times PB of B prime. But this equals to P A union B of A prime uh, times B prime. But image of P Union B, as we already said, right? So image of P is kernel of R. So that's exactly what we need. Okay. And that's proof. So 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 that's proof this desired uh quasi multiplicativity property, which is crucial, right, for all the story that tau of E times tau of U prime sits in tau U intersects U prime when sets u and u prime community. Any questions so far? Okay, so mm, uh, let me uh, formulate and kind of, let me return to uh, non-displaceable fiber theorem. So we, we have a map with commuting coordinates to RN. And here is a theorem. So it's a remarkable work by uh, Chuk Yu Mak Yuhan Sun, uh, published in Journal of Topology these days. That, uh, I mean, this is an improvement of our non-displaceable fiber theorem with Cantor, it says that uh, for some P in Rn, uh, there exists a fiber so that its SH is not zero, okay? And uh, actually, uh, uh, what we tried to do with Cantor, so uh, we, Produce the hierarchy of uh, rigid sets, which are relatively inputs, like heavy sets, super heavy sets, which were of uh, probably enough attracted some attention. And uh, what happens now that uh, with this, with this new, with this new definitions, so maximum were all one, and the other one on the one hand, and we would. Uh, so can introduce in principle more and more uh, properties which correspond to certain rigidity, right? And so then you have a real zoo of properties and the real zoo of uh, uh, errors between them, right? So some of them are related, some of them are almost related, some of them are unclear and so on. So, so there exists some, uh, some, uh, some progress in this direction. I probably kind of decided I will not 
go in this direction, but I uh, rather uh, will emphasize that these new developments uh, uh, somehow enable I mean, basically these three authors to solve the problems which we wanted to solve for uh, quite a while. Okay. And uh, it, is, it deals with this notion of quasi state. So let me remember that uh, quasi state is a functional. Uh, symplectic quasi state is a functional on smooth functions, symplectic manifold, which uh, satisfies the following properties. So it's a normalized, so it's uh, one on one, one, right? So it's monotone in the usual way, and it is linear on Poisson commuting subalgebras. Okay. And it comes from spectral invariance in floor theory and uh, exists. Kind of there, there are many versions, but the best version, the one which I'm discussing now, exists when uh, quantum cohomology admits a field factor. For instance, it seems simple in the case of almost projectors. Okay. And uh, corollary uh, uh, by Mark Sunan Varalkonas is that Floyd theoretical quasi states are actually quasi multiplicative. So if functions f and g commute, so then z of f times g equals to z of f equals uh, times z of g. So somehow we conjecture the conjecture this in several occasions. So for now what the error is of uh, in terms of non-commutativity. In this uh, or in certain cases, uh, the one says that this is not worked out, but the following is known that z of f plus g minus z of g minus z of g is less than equal than constant times square root of norm of Poisson breaking of g. Correct, right? So, and c, c depends, uh, right? Yeah. You have, do you have a size of the support somewhere as well? Or no, no, that's no, normalized. No, it's, it's, it's homogeneous. Yeah, yeah. yeah homogeneous. Okay, so this is called Poisson breaking inequality. And I, you can, I think, I think. For interesting cases of F and G, then it's a, would the arrow be interesting? Yes, so I mean, this is, this is. I mean, this is general. Yes, this is general. But, uh, in particular cases, so. you can you, you can try to calculate it. So in, interesting thing is that so so what is probably most interesting in this inequality that the proof uses uh, not only quasi states but the related notion of quasi morphism in, in the group, right? So uh, so we actually say that z of f is like uh, uh, rho r of uh, uh, phi f t, right? And r from gamma to r is homogeneous quasimorphism. Okay, and it has defects. So, uh, so homogeneous quasimorphisms are uh, famous objects in group theory, so studied by Brooks, by Gromov, by Zhisk, by really many people, hunting for them. And uh, they have something which is called defect. So R of phi psi minus R of phi minus R of psi is uh, less or equal than C. Okay. So this C is okay, I will write C prime. So this C prime is related to the C. And uh, this C prime is uh, in, 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 in the context of Calabi Cosimor, which are related to fluor homology, basically come from fluor homology. Some properties of quantum homology, and I should say that sharp calculation here is, is very, very difficult. So, uh, recently, I think for us two, I, I don't remember, or Pazit uh, with uh, some guys, so or, or calculated sharply, or, or did some breakthrough kind of record breaking estimate on polymorphism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a difficult step, yeah. So, but in this another way, so 
Multiplicativity is a different property, right? So it's, uh, and uh, this is absolutely non-trivial. And that's basically related to the following thing. So to prove uh, this uh, multiplicativity so means that uh, you want to prove that C of F squared equals to C of F squared. And simply mark uh, sun and Varelgona, so they they proved the following thing that uh, SH of K is not zero. I mean this quantum cohomology in this context, right? So in the context when you have junior positive states, is equivalent to the fact that K is super heavy. And super heavy means the following: that if your function equals to some number with this set, so then quasi state equals to this number. And that's of course solves the problem because you take you restrict f and so then you restrict f squared to the same set so that determines value of the state on the functions. So now the fact why this result is remarkable uh, deserves a discussion. That's probably the last thing which you want to do. So so there is a, a strong analogy with. Uh, quantum mechanics, I would say that all, all, the problem certainly was motivated by, by quantum mechanics, right? And here is how the motivation works. So there exists a correspondence principle. Quantum mechanics contains classical mechanics when Planck constant goes to, to zero. So functions correspond to Hermitian observables. So let's remember this. And commuting observables, so Poisson commuting functions respond to, uh, of course, commuting operators, but physical meaning is that they are simultaneously measurable. Okay. So now, uh, this, uh, so, so let me recall this quasi-multiplicativity axiom, right? So it deals with a kind of Poisson commuting sets. Okay. Exactly as symplectic quasi-states were linear on Poisson commuting functions, so this property somehow is related to Poisson commuting sets, okay? And uh, how, I mean, what does it mean physically? I cannot tell you. However, I mean, this multiplicativity, which, which I just mentioned, this property, has a very clear physical meaning. That's a good thing, okay? So, uh, somehow, uh, I wish to recall you that in 1930s, von Neumann defined uh, Quantum states is linear positive functions on observables. And then in 1930s also, uh, a German scientist, I think she was combining philosophy and physics, Greta Herman. So she came up with criticism of the following axiom of. Uh, on right, so linearity. So, uh, she said the following, it's look, uh, row of observable is basically expectation kind of observable in a state. But how you can take uh, sum of f plus g, how we can think about sum of f plus g, if they are not simultaneously measured, that nonsense. So actually you should replace definition of quantum state, but by the following definition, right? So this is true if f and g are okay. And then happen some uh, interesting thing, which probably could happen only in physics. So, so, so to start to, to start with Nabudi Lisson. I mean, she published two papers. I think one of philosophy, on philosophy, one on, in in physical journal about this. Yeah, it was completely forgotten. She she began. Active and anti Nazi underground and moved to London. And so later, later he returned to Germany and became professor in Brown. However, somewhere in the 50s, Bohm and Bell, who were famous physicists, so they more or less rediscovered this, were extremely surprised. Okay? And uh, I will say in a second why they were surprised. But uh, Paradox was completely resolved by Gleason in 58, who proved the fifth dimension of Hilbert space of quantum mechanics is at least state. So then every quasi-state is actually state. So I mean, this, this uh, 
I mean, conditions were kind of stronger assumption with this state actually can be removed if Gilbert space of quantum mechanics is has sufficiently large, large damage. It's very difficult to say, actually. Recent stadium is extremely okay. And uh, thus, this existence of symplectic quasi-states uh, can be considered as anti gleason phenomenon in quantum mechanics, right? So something which kind of ideologically come from quantum mechanics, but it does not exist in quantum mechanics by Gleason. But in classical mechanics, this exists amply, right? So in uh, uh, due to Floyd theory, and it's also kind of funny that in this theory of quasi states, there are two very different cases. So there is two dimensional case where quasi states were essentially discovered by Arnes uh, by means of functional analysis, general topology. But, uh, and uh, one can show that this two-dimensional quasi state, symplectic or, or, or topological, all the same. But in higher dimensions, only known examples come from them. So somehow, some, okay. Now, why there was a fuss? So why uh, Brett Herman and Bowman Bell later on cared about all this story about definition of, of quantum states? After all, I mean, some foundational definition, I mean, physicists, don't care about it much. Of course, uh, von Neumann made a rather dramatic conclusion from what he did. It's called no hidden variable conclusion that there is no dis there are no dispersion free quantum state. So for every quantum state, there exists an observable. So that rho of a square, so expectation of a, a square minus expectation of a square kind of uh, is not zero, okay? It follows from just description of quantum states, via linearity as trace operators. And uh, I mean, physicists were unable to accept it. And what is amazing that still, I mean, when I was working on the subject, right? So uh, there was a flow of papers. I mean, you can witness a flow of papers who are discussing this. Even though apparently this one seems to close the stone. Okay, so this uh, this is very very sharp contrast with classical mechanics because in classical mechanics, yes, yeah, so what is classical state? Is a measure, right? So dispersion free classical state is a point. So in sense topology, so I'm thinking about symplectic manifold. So we have new points, okay? But uh, in quantum mechanics, there are no so no, you cannot say where are you, right? So everything will be missing. But so now, okay, so uh, this uh, interpretation of MS V quasi multiplicativity, so as I wrote, right? So I wrote here that Z of F square equals to Z of F square. So this means that this Floer theoretical uh, classical quasi states are actually dispersion, dispersion free. So this was motivation of the question. To understand whether they are or not. To all this relative symplectic homology, business and how uh, then proves. Okay, do you think it's a good time for me to? So what does that mean for the the story of uh, quantum versus classical? Say it again. The story of quantum versus classical. What is like? What what is? Like, what's the, is there a conclusion? No, I don't think there is a, there is a conclusion. So I think the only conclusion which I know that uh, there exists quantum foot, footprints of synthetic rigidity. So certain, certain results which uh, kind of, uh, so, 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 so for instance, kind of, you, uh, one of the statements, which uh, I mean, requires uh, uh, work, of course, and then and, and, and correct glossary, but roughly speaking, you can, I mean, uh, assume the following that for you have a, a classical uh, phase space, right? And uh, you consider it's covered by displaceable subsets, okay? So, so you, your, your task is, I mean, you put sensors in this subspace. Free space, and you want to localize one particle in one of the states. 
Eu quando dou isso, eu quero dizer para si, já para ter que ver em nós. Vou ver em nós. E a smaller de sensar, bigger than nós. E small by smaller, e não sintetic size. This is one thing. So another, another thing which uh, uh, kind of quantum footprint of simulated rigidity, which I think when I gave a talk on the seminar, long ago, right, that, uh, uh, I mean, this offers displacement energy could have been discovered in the 40s if people would care to uh, Dequantize uh, energy, uh, time energy inequality in the correct way. Okay? So, so uh, the time energy uncertainty in the correct way. But this did not happen, so, so somehow, some, somehow, dynamic displacement energy, right? So then, then we will run uh, Charlie interpreted in some way related to energy capacity. So, I mean, there is some game between them, but but still we, we don't understand. So, so I think a really interesting question is what are kind of, uh, I mean, genuine quantum quasi states do not exist by Gleason, right? So, I mean, there is no question, but maybe there exists some partial structures. And uh, to, to grasp this partial structures kind of properly is a serious task. So, so I, 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 I don't know. I have oh, a question. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Is, is anything known about fiber bundles? If I have a symplectic fiber bundle, uh, how do these ideal valued measures behave? Uh, it's it's an interesting question. I think it, it simply was not was not done. Okay. Certainly meaningful questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about this um, product uh, product formula that um, Mark and Suhani uh, have Does it, can you use it to show that, like, some dichotomy for the measure? Like, it's either zero or one? Yes, or yes, one? yes, yes. So, so with this quasi state, you can, you can really quasi measure. And it is known that multiplicativity yields the quantum quasi matrix. I probably said it either zero or one. Right? So whenever you have this multiplicativity, yes, 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 okay. yes. And this was not kind of essentially known. Yeah. Okay. Um, and another question is: Is it like is there a, some ingredient that mathematically that exists in Gleason's proof that is different from the symplectic? situation? Yeah, so here is a very sad situation. So Gleason, uh, Gleason's proof is structured in the following way. So, uh, so first, you, I mean, if you assume that this is roughly speaking, I, 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 I can be mistaken, but roughly speaking, I don't know. So if you assume that this quasi state is continuous, so then you do representation. Simply kind of, uh, it's some statement about sphere after all, so you can reduce it to, to because it's, it's the states, right? So, so you can reduce it to two-dimensional sphere and then use representation theory of S3 to do everything. And that's exercise. Okay. okay. However, continuity is none of this. And then Gleason produces a proof Absolutely, kind of in the in the spirit of Olympic problems, so some some crazy proof, which uh, sol solves the the problem, and so then and this can completely don't understand kind of such things. So in, interesting that many people I and mean, there is a serious papers who try to understand what you listen to all so they they all the proof. All it's also very complicated and. Um, no, I understand. Oh, but I mean, there has are... it been formalized? <laughs> has it been formalized? No, it's absolutely formal. So I mean, there is no no doubt. That yeah, I mean, like a, like com computer formalization. I don't know. <laughs> so, so 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 there is an ingredient which I completely don't understand. And I didn't find the paper which explains. So on the more person, but uh, when I see that some logicians start to argue whether the business proof is 
Это не скорее как инструктив, но... What if one Neumann think about it? Do you have me? I don't know. I mean, in particular, he obviously didn't require FNG to commute, uh, but it turns out that it wasn't needed anyway. So perhaps it was just like he didn't. Well, no, I knew it all along. I, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> my, uh, for, so Gleason proved his theorem in fifty eight, and from Neumann died. And I think in the fifties. Ah, I see. So, so probably he didn't. Know. I see. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it's still ideas, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the definition of the, this ideal valued measure, the way that Gromo did, did he? I mean, was it like to always point like some sort of big fiber theorem? So yes, I think that Gromov actually uh, one like I mean, I mean this this Torus theorem which I mentioned. So it, it was a flagship result, right? Of a little piece of this paper. So it's a huge paper about many things, and I think that. Uh, there is a mainstream contents of the paper which uh, which is not related to what I to what I'm telling. So and there is usually in Grom's paper it's, it's called kind of singularities, expanders, whatever I mean. But I mean this this piece is absolutely ingenious and very useful to to what to what we are trying to do. It's uh, by the way it's maybe uh, I mean there is uh, this. Uh, Geometric analog of big fiber theorem is called waste inequality, right? So if you have a map from a sphere to somewhere, then there is this green which which has large bullet points. So that's the, that's the that's a small question. So in a way you said maybe we can think about super heavy cells to, to be those that they have non-zero homology. How about the heavy cells? What are they? Okay, kind of, yeah, okay. So let's see. I need to try to answer. It's, uh... Oh, we have more slides. Well, have more slides. <laughs> oh, sorry, thanks. Okay, so let's see. So, so what they, uh, what they proved, so they, uh, they, they proved the following, uh, the following state. So, so the, 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 main, the main result is visible is equivalent to heavy. So visible means that the sh of k is not zero. Okay? So visible is equivalent to heavy. So then they prove that super heavy means sh full. Full is the following. So compact is full is if every compact in the complement has a uh, symplectic homology zero. Okay. But we had a condition, we had this conjecture that heavy means as H heavy. As H heavy means that uh, uh, S H heavy means that tau is not zero. Tau of K is not zero. Okay, and it's proved for genuine quasi states. But however, the, the, the we proved the, under some conditions that heavy yields as H heavy. And they prove that SH heavy yields heavy. So this this implication, heavy yields SH, not yet proved. Okay. So, but, but but this is messy thing. So I didn't show the slide because uh, I, I still don't don't know how to talk about it good, in a good way. So too much too much numbers. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? If not, let's thank Lenny again.